if I were to describe the last year in a single word, it would probably be humbling. Tumultuous and exhausting. Last year was frenetic. I would describe it as challenging. <laughs> it's just been very interesting. Different. Transforming. Wild. We all got uh, notified on a Saturday, uh, late Saturday morning, early Saturday afternoon, that the first COVID case in our area had been discovered. And uh, I mean, everybody wanted to know what is going on. So it's kind of the moment the whole world changed. I remember thinking about, you know, the the crisis of confidence that we have in this country regarding, you know, public health, science, government, the media. And, every institution you need for a pandemic response. And I figured that it would be a challenge for this for this country. When you're reading those numbers every day, it is so easy to just almost like read it and not process the information that you just read. It's just different numbers. <laughs> um, and you have to remember that attached to every single one of those numbers is a person. There's the clarity of the adrenaline surge when you know that this is, this is serious and perhaps a, a career defining story that you're going to cover. You start to realize, I got to figure out a way to um, ha have some of the staff working and reporting and doing radio from home. Number one, I knew that we could do it. We have, you know, professionals here who have been doing it a long time. I actually walked all the way around my house knowing that I was going to be working from home um, and talking out loud to myself so I could hear where I might have the, the quietest places in the house. and the closet ended up being the quietest place. Working from home with kids has definitely been interesting. I took over my daughter, my four-year-old daughter, Olive's play tent and decided that that was gonna be my ideal vocal booth to work from. You know, humans particularly is that you put them in a situation like that and for the first little bit of time, there's an adjustment period, but as it goes on, it just, becomes the new normal. You know, sparks a whole other major news event in our lives um, with the social justice protests and demonstrations that, that broke out. I remember at the end of the ACP had scheduled a public gathering outside the Law and Justice Center, and I figured there'd be maybe a few dozen people there. It was a Sunday afternoon, it was in the middle of the pandemic, and I remember walking up to the site along Front Street and seeing the crowd just get bigger and bigger as I got closer and was just blown away by the sheer size of it. We saw several others in, in places where you wouldn't expect a, a Black Lives Matter rally. I mean, uh, we had them in Peking and Metamora and Elmwood, uh, which are which are all, you know, majority white towns. It was pretty amazing how it touched every everyone. It was just so important to make sure that we're not only telling these stories, but telling them right, getting a very nuanced, a very thorough telling of people's experiences in which are very painful, frustrating, hard. And to interview people during that time and get their feelings on just certain things was, it was, it just showed the depth of the community, honestly. Sometimes people take Bloomington Normal at face value, judge it by a cover small town, small town activities, but there's a lot of depth here. But you've also got a very busy election season that we had to deal with. We had a uh, Peoria City Council was working to deal with a major budget deficit and cuts that they had to make in according to that. You had the school districts dealing with whether how to transfer to remote learning with the pandemic. There's just so many different angles that seemed above and beyond, you know, the normal reporting that I had been used to. Thanks to the listeners for supporting us, you know, through this pandemic. I know it's been a difficult time financially, emotionally, you know, everything for everybody. So thanks for thanks for listening that you support us. If you're going to expect people to produce high quality work from home, it, it takes an investment. You know, it takes, uh, you know, taking some of those listener dollars and using them um, you know, to upgrade somebody's home studio. Whether it's a crazy year or a not so crazy year, your financial support is what powers public media in your community.
So please step up right now during our spring fun drive and make a contribution. You can find a link at our website. And thank you.